All right, what do you do when you need a knife? You just jump in your car, head to the nearest mega sports store, and grab whatever looks cool, right? Because a knife's a knife, it just needs to be sharp. Wrong. You come here to Blade HQ, where they specialize in knives, and will put something in your hand that not only looks and feels great, but will also perform. Now, on this episode of What Knife Should I Buy, we're gonna be talking about entry-level folders, knives under 50 bucks. We'll look at some common locking mechanisms, blade shapes, as well as one-hand deployment methods. So let's get in there and check out some steel. Hey Tyson. Hey Mark, how's it going? Good, it's Mote. Mark. So I have a friend that uh, was talking to me the other day. He knew I worked here at Blade HQ and he was asking for some recommendations, but he didn't really know a lot about knives. And I figure you guys make recommendations all day, so maybe you could uh, talk to us a little bit about some knives. So uh, first off, what is basically a, a pocket knife? What are we talking about when we talk about a pocket knife? Talking about a blade that usually folds, uh, generally has a clip, uh, you know, carried in your pocket for everyday use, uh, you know, commonly referred to as like an EDC or an everyday carry knife. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that's what we're looking at it. It's, uh, you know, basic level there. Okay. And I see that we have like a ton of different knives here. So, so why are there so many different folding knives? Why are there so many different pocket knives? What's that all about? Uh, essentially, we're looking at, you know, different blade styles, blade shapes. Um, you move up in the price range. Uh, you different with, or you're dealing with different materials, different makers, things like that, um, which gets pretty complicated. But today we'll just stick with the basic pocket knife that we have. Okay, cool. All right, so for a first time buyer, what are some of the things that they should be aware of when looking at knives? Uh, definitely, uh, you know, other characteristics of the blades uh, for now, lock types. Uh, this is a lock back. Uh, we'll have Timote show you the frame lock and the liner lock, but uh, this one's, you know, widely regarded to be one of the strongest locks. Um, it sits on a little rocker, and as you can see as I open it, the blade is pivoting, and then that's going to drop in. And once that drops in, uh, it is, you know, pretty pretty rock solid. Uh, I guess the only drawback would be is that it, you kind of do have to use two hands to close it as opposed to the others. Um, but very, very strong design right here. Um, you, you simply just open it, and then you would depress this to, you know, close the blade. So this, this right here is a frame lock where you can see the handle frame right here. Um, when I open the blade, the base of the steel is going to engage with that frame lock, which is going to fall in there. Um, and once that's open, you can see that it's really solid. Uh, it's hard to close, but the nice thing about it is you can open and close it uh, with one hand. But yeah, essentially that is your frame lock. Um, different knives are going to have different materials, um, different locks that engage there. Um, the other one that we have here is the liner lock. This right here, you can see that there is a handle material on the outside, and you can see the stainless steel liners on the inside of this knife. Um, when I open the blade up, you can see this liner right here with the jimping is actually going to engage in the base of that steel. So that's your basic liner lock. Um, same thing, different knives are going to have different characteristics, um, different, you know, different jimping styles like that for that lock. But it definitely is a, str a strong lock that will keep that engaged. Okay. So three of the more common, frame lock, liner lock, and the lock back. Now what about the blade shapes? I see there's uh, different tips. I know that's a Tonto. So what are the advantages and disadvantages maybe for uh, the different shapes? Uh, tonto is definitely, uh, you know, first of all, it's an attractive shape. A lot of people like the look of it. It looks pretty cool. Um, but, you know, having the, the two essentially different grinds, you've got a very, very strong tip. The power is very reinforced towards the tip. It's good for slicing. It's, it's good for, you know, uh, penetrating. Um, it's a... Uh, the only drawback to it, I find, is that it's you know it's it's kind of harder to sharpen because you got to be sharpening two separate edges. Um, but that's a tanto. Um, this would be like your you know drop point uh, kind of knife. Uh, generally got a, a larger belly on it for skinning, or you know for other purposes. Um, you can usually get up on on the spine and get some good control. Uh, fairly standard knife uh, shape. Yeah, um, these right here. This is your more of a clip point style blade where you can see that it comes out over here, uh, flat edge on the spine, then drops a little bit. Um, still has the same big belly, things like that. Um, definitely better for piercing action, things like that. Um, the other thing, it still does have that big belly, like I said, that's easy to get in and do the skinning, things like that, if you need it for any kind of situation like that. Uh, this right here is your drop point. It's just a different blade style. Uh, blade styles are pretty unique to each designer, each maker. Um, so just a different version of a, a drop point blade. And then the other thing that I'm noticing uh, is I think most people know like a Swiss Army knife, the nail nick, but you guys are doing one-handed opening, which is pretty common for these types. So maybe you could show us some of the different deployment mechanisms for these one-handed opening. Sure. Uh, this one's got a thumb stud on either side. 
Some people call it a thumb lug, um, and that's you know, basically you so you can you know, have the knife securely in your hand, and then you can control it as you fold it out. Um, you can do it left-handed as well. It's the benefit of the, the double lug there. Um, I don't know. I usually flick my knives open anyway. It's just kind of habit. Um, and you know, here you got a flipper. This one's probably a little bit more suited towards guys like me that like the quick, easy deployment. Um, you know, this this little flipper here is an extension of the blade, and once you flick it, it you know, whip out the blade and lock up your knife. Uh, you know, really good and convenient. This thumb stud looking thing here is more of a stop pin. Um, not so much, not so hard. You must use it open with your thumb uh, without the flipper. But um, what do you got? Uh, so this right here actually has a couple different deployment methods. It has the thumb disc, uh, which Tyson said, like on the uh, other one has the thumb studs. This is actually a disc at the top of the uh, knife right here. Uh, you can use it for ambidextrous opening. You know, left-handers can use it really easy. Essentially what you're going to do is you're just going to put your thumb underneath there and raise it. Um, gives you more of a controlled opening system. We talked about that earlier. The other part on this, just real briefly, is they have the wave system right here. Um, it's for quick deployment. You can attach, you can hook it on your pocket and throw it out while you're opening your knife. Um, this one right here has what we call the spider hole. It's this little piece right here. Same thing. Easy, one-hand deployment. You can open it up really controlled. And you can still control your line and lock with it. Okay. So things that you want to be thinking about when you're looking for a first-time knife. The, lo the lock type, the blade shape, and then the deployment method. Now, what are some other uh, factors that you maybe want to think about? How about the handle material? I know G10 is a big handle material, and then I understand like jimping and pocket clips, those are all different. Maybe you guys could tell us something about that. Sure, um, G10 is big on the scene right now. Uh, a lot of knife companies have it. It's a really light composite material uh, It's woven and they put an epoxy over it. Um, it's super light, super durable, it's nice. When it gets wet, still has that texture feeling where you can grip it um, you know, without slipping off of it. Yep, uh, I got one here, the, the cold steel one. This is some sort of a plastic composite material. Um, a lot of them have different formulas for it, but the, the main benefit to this is that it's lightweight. Um, and this stuff's really, really, really textured, so even, you know, if your hands are slightly wet or if you're, you know, you still get good control, good grip, um, very, very lightweight as well. Um, this one's just got G10 as well, um, but it's G10's very good stuff. And how about the pocket clips? I know you can carry it either tip up or tip down. So what are uh, the advantages and disadvantages of that? As far as I'm aware, that is all just a preference. You know, I, I, I definitely like my knives tip up because I, I like to, to grab them and deploy them as such. You know, uh, a lot of people prefer the tip down as like this one. For me, it's just not as natural. It, it's really just a preference thing. But, you know, luckily most knives, as Timothy will show you here, you know, they come with you know, different options uh, for either right or left-handed or tip up or tip down carry. Yeah, definitely, it's nice. Um, like this knife right here has a four-way carry. You can actually switch the clip either on the front side you can carry tip up, tip down, or for the left-handers, you can go ahead and throw it on the other side. Uh, makes it really easy that way. They don't have to try and put themselves in an awkward predicament when they're trying to open their, their knife that they purchased. Okay. All right, so definitely some good things to think about when you're looking for entry-level knives. Now, I know blade steel is super important as well as grinds, and that's something that we're gonna cover in another episode. But I assume for most of these, uh, the blade steels are pretty entry level, good for resharpening, basic kind of stainless steel stuff. Yeah, yeah, very easy to resharpen, very easy to work with for giving steels here. Uh, a lot of people think low end steels and you know they, they associate something negative with that, not at all. Very easy to sharpen, easy to use. You know, certainly you can you know work your way up to some advanced steels, um, but for most people, uh, day in and day out, the steel's gonna be great. All right, so a couple tips when looking for an entry level knife consider your locking mechanism, the blade shape, and then the deployment method. So, for some good recommendations, check out these knives from Blade HQ. All right, so I know you guys aren't carrying entry-level knives, so let's see the EDC. I have a Spyderco Little Lion Spy. What do you guys have? Uh, I actually have it's a Hinder XM18 three and a half Very steer nice. blade. It's one of my favorites. I'm actually carrying my uh, Medford 187. I picked up after uh, Thanksgiving. Pretty sick little knife. Cool. Yeah. All right. I know a lot of our audience. Uh, you guys know a lot about knives. So in the comment section, tell us what are good entry level knives.